Good morning, everyone, and happy June 1st. I'm Vasily Varlamos. After a stormy last few days, the rain is moving out and the warmth is moving in. I'll let you know when we'll approach the 90s coming up. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter, and coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, big news on the debt deal. The decision from the House just days away from the default deadline. Good morning, I'm Sarah Jacobson. This morning, Meridian's mayor has a big speech scheduled for today. Where and when you can tune in to Robert or Mayor Robert Simison's State of the City Address. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thanks for waking up with us. We're kicking off the month of June. It is June 1st, 2023. It's Thursday. We'll get to your weather in just a bit. But first, new this morning, the House passing a debt ceiling and budget cut package late yesterday. The bill now heads to the Senate with passage expected by the end of this week. This as lawmakers face a looming deadline. Experts say the U.S. will run out of money to pay its debts as soon as this upcoming Monday. The compromise deal comes with dissension from progressive Democrats and hard right Republicans. And the president set to deliver the commencement address at the Air Force Academy's graduation this morning. The occasion marks Biden's first time addressing the Academy's graduating class as president. He previously delivered the commencement address as vice president back in 2014 and 2009. More than 900 cadets will become commissioned officers today and the Air Force will cap the celebration with a performance from the Thunderbirds. And there are new developments in the investigation surrounding former president Donald Trump's handling of classified documents. CBS News confirming that the special counsel Jack Smith and his team, they've obtained an audio tape of Trump discussing a classified document that he held on to after leaving the White House. Now, the sources said Trump acknowledges there are national security restrictions on the memo that detailed potential plans to attack Iran. Well, you're looking live in Washington this morning where that debt ceiling deal now heads to the Senate. By a vote of 314 to 117, the House of Representatives agreed to raise the nation's debt ceiling. The deal also coming with spending cuts, something many Republicans are calling a win, cutting the deficit one and a half trillion dollars over the next decade. But some conservative Republicans say it doesn't nearly go far enough. This deal begs the question, with Republicans like these, who needs Democrats? Democrats, too, torn over this compromise. Some progressives complaining the concessions could mean less funding to fight climate change and stricter work requirements for recipients of social services. We're supposed to take care of the most vulnerable people, and with this deal, we're harming the most vulnerable people. The Senate will now look to pass the bill quickly to avoid default. Both Democratic and Republican leaders in the Senate saying they will support the bill. When this agreement reaches the Senate, I'll be proud to support it without delay. Any needless delay, any last minute brinksmanship at this point would be an unacceptable risk. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said the U.S. will run short of money to pay its debts on Monday, June 5th. Well, in his remarks after the House vote, Speaker Kevin McCarthy touting the GOP's priorities achieved in the debt ceiling deal. Now, in particular, he highlighted the new work requirements for federal aid programs, as well as the budget cuts to the IRS. He also acknowledged the discontent from fellow Republicans who say the spending restrictions don't go far enough. My last statement to everyone in America, I will never give up on you. It wasn't an easy fight. I had people on both sides upset, but I was focused on you and I will stay focused on you. In total, 71 Republicans voted no on the deal, including Colorado Representative Ken Buck, who's now vowing to remove McCarthy as Speaker of the House. Well, shortly after the House approved the measure, President Biden sending out this tweet urging Senate lawmakers to act as quickly as possible. He made the plea on Twitter, which he called a critical step in preventing the nation from defaulting. He also thanked McCarthy for negotiating in, quote, good faith and highlighted the agreement's protections for Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid.
Well, the Federal Reserve may skip hiking interest rates at its ne next meeting this month. Now, Federal Reserve Governor Philip Jefferson said in a speech Wednesday that skipping a rate hike would allow Fed policymakers to see more data before making those decisions. The Fed has implemented a 10 straight rate hikes over the past 14 months. The current benchmark interest rate roughly 5.1 percent. And more states sending some of their National Guard members to help down at the southern border, or rather the U.S.-Mexico border. Now, the governors of Virginia, West Virginia, and South Carolina announcing the deployment of their National Guard troops. Now, this brings the total number of Republican-led states deploying soldiers or offering assistance to at least eight. These latest announcements come after Texas Governor Greg Abbott asked other states for help. Now, you may recall that Idaho State Police, they're currently at the southern border of Texas to train with the Texas Department of Public Safety. Well, back here in Idaho, Meridian Mayor Robert Simison is giving his State of the City address today. It will be at the Galaxy Event Center and also streamed online at 3.30 this afternoon. If you plan to attend in person, keep in mind you must register in advance. More information for that can be found on our website. And Idaho voters may have the chance to put an initiative on the 2024 ballot that opens up Idaho's primaries and allows for ranked choice voting. Now, Veterans for Political Innovation is the group that's spearheading this, in this initiative. They want to dissolve a law that was passed back in 2012 that requires Republican voters to affiliate with the party in order to vote for their candidates. By opening up the primaries, now everybody gets to look at and vote for all the candidates. The second part of the measure is to implement a system called instant runoff or ranked choice voting. Now, this idea is to ensure a candidate has to earn more than half of first choice votes. The group says they hope to begin gathering signatures this summer to get it on the ballot. Keep in mind, Idaho requires 6% of registered voters in 18 of the 35 Idaho districts for a ballot initiative. And you may recall a recent school levy failed to pass this election. Now the West Ada School District says it's in a soft hiring freeze. The district says they now have to find alternative solutions for the district's facility needs. In addition to the freeze, outdoor activity improvements may be or will be minimized. Recurring maintenance projects will be delayed and some school boundaries will also be adjusted. Portables will be placed at some schools. Well, a new observatory at Bruno Dune State Park near Mountain Home is being dedicated today. It has Idaho's largest, most advanced telescope. They say the new state-of-the-art observatory features a rotating dome protecting the powerful telescope and providing an unobstructed view of the night sky. That dedication starts at 11 a.m. to officially add the facility to the park. After that, the first public show using the new scope is scheduled for June 16th, so staff can be trained on how to use it. And another fun summer event this Saturday, cool off with your furry friends. The Pup is opening a pool for dogs in CUNA. The grand opening will have a rescue fundraiser, an auction, vendors, food, music, and of course, plenty of dogs ready to take a dip. The grand opening is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And Make-A-Wish Idaho holding its ninth annual Walk for Wishes. It's set for tomorrow at Esther Simplot Park. The walk about a mile long. It begins at 6 o'clock sharp. Registration starts about an hour before the walk. The organization hoping to raise $80,000. This year, their goal is to grant more wishes than ever for Idaho kids. And you can find a link to register. Just head to our website. That's IdahoNews.com. In another fun event you can not only enjoy today, but over the next couple of days, you can head out to the Boise Hawks game. They're taking on the Ogden Raptor, uh, Raptors. Over the next couple of days, they got a six game set and they're now in game three today. We're going to have some great conditions. It'll be at 76 degrees at first pitch, but you might want to bring a coat because we are going to have some significant winds. We'll see wind speeds at 14 miles an hour, and then we are going to drop down to 66 degrees with some partly cloudy skies. By the end of the game, those wind speeds will also drop a bit as well. Now, speaking of you're going to need a coat, you are going to need a coat when you step out the door this morning. We're sitting at 54 degrees right now in Boise with a southwesterly wind of about three miles an hour, not affecting that feels like temperature at all. Staying true to form at 54 degrees. Now we're going to see partly cloudy, mostly sunny skies all day today. And as I said, we'll see some significant winds. We'll see wind speeds reach up to 15 miles an hour here in Boise. And then in terms of temperatures, we're going to jump into the 60s around 10 a.m. We'll reach the 70s around 1 p.m. leading to our high today of 78 degrees expected to arrive at around 6 p.m. Now here's a look at future cast. We're going to see those partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies all day today. Moving 
over to Stanley, they are going to see some rain today and they'll likely see some thunderstorms over the next couple of days. So if you're heading up to Stanley over the weekend, keep that in mind. Now tomorrow morning, we're going to wake up to some cloudy skies as some storms climb up into the West Central Mountains. The Long Valley may see some showers on Friday morning and then we'll see some spotty showers as we head into the afternoon. Now back here in the Treasure Valley, we should just see little to no precipitation from today through most of the weekend. Now on Sunday morning, we do have a slight chance of seeing some isolated showers and then from Monday through Wednesday, we'll see a few isolated showers around the region. Now here's a look at high temperatures over the next five days. We'll jump above average today after being below average yesterday. We'll see a high of 78 degrees today, but then we'll jump into the 80s by tomorrow and we'll jump a degree every single day of the weekend. We'll see a high of 82 degrees on Saturday and then 83 degrees going to be the high on Sunday, but we'll keep warming up as we head into next week. We'll see a high of 86 degrees on Monday. We'll approach 90 degrees on both Tuesday and on Wednesday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there on this first day of June, as you can see, everything running nice and smooth. A calm start to your Thursday morning. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down if you're starting your day anytime soon. So when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI. That's on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, the 2024 presidential race underway, where one prominent Republican candidate will be today. Plus, a Lego thief caught in California. How much one man is accused of stealing that has the retailer $30,000 in the hole? Oof. All right, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Now, in a new survey, 75% of people say they prefer to do this at home. The answer, drinking wine. All right, now for today's question. Nearly 60% of people wish they could do this year round. Oh, this is going to be fun. All right, folks, what is it? This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 514. Welcome back. Republican presidential candidate Ron DeSantis is set to make a campaign stop in New Hampshire today. Now, the Florida governor spent his first full day of campaigning in Iowa yesterday. Nick Wieg from our Sinclair sister station in Cedar Rapids gives us a look. Governor Ron DeSantis before a packed crowd here at Hawkeye Downs received plenty of applause throughout his speech outlining strict conservative policies and how unlike other Republicans, he will get them done. Are you happy to see institution after institution be infected with the woke mind virus? It was a speech loaded with the right wing platforms that have become popular within the Republican Party. DeSantis touting his actions as governor, including his controversial moves on immigration. It is not normal to have millions of illegal aliens pouring into communities all across our country, to have drugs pouring in across our country because of the dereliction of duty of the commander in chief. The governor briefly joined on stage by his wife, Casey, who shares stories of home life with three young children and defending her husband's actions and celebrating his resolve. Even though he faced unrelenting attacks, he never backed down, he never cowered, he never changed, he never took the path of least resistance. You know in watching in execution that he fights and stands and defends what is right. Finally, DeSantis closed with a promise to the estimated 500 in attendance that the Iowa caucus can propel him to the nomination and the White House. You can set your clock to January 20th, 2025, at high noon, because on the west side of the Capitol, I'll have this left hand on the Bible, I will have this right hand in the air, and I will be taking the oath of office as the 47th president of these United States. No excuses. I will get the job done. I'm Nick Weig reporting. And former Vice President Mike Pence is jumping in the fray for president. The Associated Press reports that Pence is set to launch his campaign on June 7th in Iowa. Adding his name to a growing list of candidates, that includes his old boss, former President Donald Trump. Pence sees Iowa as critical to his chances. He intends to campaign aggressively for the state's voters. And 2024 Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley says her husband is heading to Africa. My husband is a combat veteran. He deployed to Afghanistan. We just found out he's getting deployed again. 
Michael Haley serves as a major with the South Carolina Army National Guard. He's expected to deploy to support the U.S. Africa Command. Haley is likely to be deployed through most of his wife's presidential campaign. Well, there are a few a new development in the investigation surrounding former President Trump's handling of classified documents. CBS News reporting and confirming that special counsel Jack Smith and his team, they've obtained an audio tape of Trump discussing a classified document that he held on to after leaving the White House. The sources say that Trump acknowledged that there are national security restrictions on the memo that detailed potential plans to attack Iran. Former federal prosecutor Scott Fredrickson says this could be a big influence on whether the special counsel indicts the former president. It's a, the kind of evidence every prosecutor seeks. Um, there's no better evidence than the words of the individual defendant himself. In the meantime, Trump's lawyers say they can prove there was no wrongdoing. The special counsel has declined to comment. And another investigation update this morning. Two top Republicans, they've been granted access to view a document that the FBI, that the FBI they believe contains evidence of wrongdoing by then Vice President Biden. Now this after Chairman James Comer threatened to hold the director of the FBI in contempt of Congress for not handing over the documents to the House Oversight Committee. This accusation fits a pattern that we un uncovered, uh, especially in Romania, where then Vice President Biden visits a country, talks about foreign policy and foreign aid, and then two weeks later his family starts getting uh, bank wires uh, from uh, foreign nationals in this country. Well, Senator Chuck Grassley and Congressman Comer will be able to view the document. The FBI is still unlikely to hand it over to the committee. Now, if that does remain the case, Comer says he'll be begin contempt of Congress proceedings. Well, hey, if you've got kids who love Lego, you know just how expensive these toys can be. And apparently so do thieves. One man in California is under arrest after police say he stole $30,000 worth of the stuff. Loss prevention employees there had noticed a male uh, loading a large amount of Legos into a shopping cart, and they also recognized him from previous thefts. The suspect is charged with felony theft and resisting. $30,000, that's a lot of Legos. Yeah. <laughs> Legos can actually cost a pretty penny. Mm -hmm. Especially if you get the ones that are like, um, what's it called? Where where they build it up, like, you know, if you oh, build yeah. a ship or like the Star Wars ones. Yes, where they build special designs. Yeah. Like the Death Star or whatever, yeah. Yeah, do you guys remember, like, if you were mad at someone when you were younger and it was like, I hope you step on a Lego. And it was like the worst, like, <laughs> that is, that is, oh, yeah, I can't believe worst. you said, yeah. Feeling yeah. in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Well, all right. Well, we're waking up this morning. It is Thursday, mm -hmm. Friday Eve around here and looking pretty good out there. It's when you're stepping out the door, though, it's feeling a little bit like wetter outside, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, would be the term. Out yeah. There yeah. This morning. Yeah. Definitely yeah. a little bit humid. We're sitting in the mid 50s right now. A little bit cool out there, too. That humidity kind of battling that this morning. We're seeing partly cloudy. Excuse me, we're seeing partly cloudy skies here in Boise right now. Partly cloudy skies also covering much of the mountain areas right now. Over near Tamarack, they're seeing some mostly cloudy skies this morning. We're also just seeing some high clouds over the Boise Mountains right now. We're going to see a partly cloudy day here in the Treasure Valley. We got a storm waiting in the wings over off, off the coast right now. That's going to bring us some showers later on as we head into next week. But as for today, we're just seeing this storm continuing to linger over the Gem State right now. Most of the precipitation just going to hang around the Central Mountains. But here in Boise, we're going to see a high pressure system that's already impacting areas like Washington and Oregon slide into western Idaho today. Now here's a look at high temperatures. We'll see a high of 78 degrees in Boise and Nampa. 79 degrees is going to be the high over in Caldwell and Emmett. 77 degrees looking like the high in Mountain Home. 81 going to be the high over in Ontario. Moving up to the mountains. 73 degrees in Idaho City. 69 in Sun Valley and 64 going to be the high in McCall. Now moving to the seven day forecast. We're going to see some mostly sunny skies both tomorrow and on Saturday. High temperature is going to jump into the low 80s through the weekend, but we're going to keep warming up as we head into next week. We'll see high temperatures jump into the mid 80s on Monday and we'll keep on approaching. We'll approach 90 degrees on both Tuesday and on Wednesday, but we'll start to see temperatures drop as we head further and further into next week. We got some scattered thunderstorms expected on Wednesday. That's likely when that storm off the coast of Washington right now will arrive. Now, meanwhile, over in the mountains, they're going to see some partly cloudy skies through the weekend. High temperatures will be in the upper 60s both today and tomorrow. Then we'll jump into the low 70s both on Saturday and Sunday. Temperatures will stay in the low 70s on Monday. But then we'll jump into the mid 70s on Tuesday and Wednesday in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily.
CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this Thursday morning, as you can see on your screen, it's looking like a nice calm start to the day. Not much happening and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI for even more team traffic updates. That's on 670 AM or 93.1 FM. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, a mom is looking for a donor after her body is pushed to the limit. The organ that could just save her life. Plus, these furry friends making an impact on our health. How they're lending a paw in hospitals. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 524 on your Thursday. Welcome back. A mom with two young boys feeling the aftermath of COVID-19. Medical reporter Liz Bonus sharing what's needed now to save her life. Hey there, everybody. When Markeisha Davis was diagnosed with COVID-19, the pandemic, it pushed her kidneys, already stressed from type 1 diabetes, to a dangerous place. Um, they started functioning at 17 percent, and I was told that I had a year left um, before I needed to start dialysis. She didn't make it a year. Daily now, a home machine like this one filters Marquisha's blood to keep her alive. I have to go to bed at a certain time. I have to time it um, because I have to run for eight hours. A kidney transplant from a living donor is Marquisha's best option to get back to a healthy life. We know that the wait times are long for waiting for a deceased donor kidney, three to five years in I'm working with one person that they've been told seven to 10. Anyone can volunteer to be tested. So Darcy Gibson's team from off the list helped Markeisha Davis create a contact page. It really is empowering people like Markeisha to give her the confidence and the tools to be able to share her story. So if you're watching this, Markeisha's boys need a match for their mom. Well, I'm here because of them. Um, I just, I, I mean, I'm the center of their world. Now, initial screening to become a living donor, just a cheek swab. She'd love to have you search hashtag Markeisha Davis. If you'd like to reach out on social media for more information, we'd love to have you do that. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Well, around one in six unvaccinated people still experiencing coronavirus symptoms up to two years after their initial infection. Swiss researchers looking at more than 1,000 unvaccinated adults in this study more than half felt back to normal within a month, but those with longer lasting symptoms, they experienced among other things, altered taste and smell, fatigue and mental health issues. Well, dogs are being used to help people feel better all across the world and experts, they say it's working. Having full-time support dogs at children's hospitals can offer benefits for both the patients and the staff. A new report looked at the use of these special dogs at a large public children's hospital in Japan. Now, it found that the dogs were most helpful for young people with terminal illnesses and helped patients become more cooperative in necessary care. Coming up on CBS 2 News, Americans feeling the impact of the economy ahead of another federal rate hike meeting. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 529 on your Thursday. You're looking live in Washington this morning, where that debt ceiling deal now heads to the Senate. By a vote of 314 to 117, the House of Representatives agreed to raise the nation's debt ceiling. The deal also coming with spending cuts, something many Republicans are calling a win, cutting the deficit by one and a half trillion dollars over the next decade. But some conservative Republicans say it doesn't go nearly far enough. This deal begs the question, with Republicans like these, who needs Democrats? Democrats, too, torn over the compromise. Some progressives claiming the concessions could mean less funding to fight climate change and stricter work requirements for recipients of social services. We're supposed to take care of the most vulnerable people, and with this deal, we're harming the most vulnerable people. The Senate will now look to pass the bill quickly to avoid default. Both Democratic and Republican leaders in the Senate already saying they'll support the bill. When this agreement reaches the Senate, I'll be proud to support it without delay. Any needless delay 
Any last-minute brinksmanship at this point would be an unacceptable risk. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has said the U.S. will run short of money to pay its debts as of Monday, June 5th. And in his remarks after the House vote, Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy toting the GOP priorities achieved in the debt ceiling deal. Now, in particular, he touted the new work requirements for federal programs, federal aid programs, as well as the budget cuts to the IRS. He also acknowledged the discontent from fellow Republicans that say the spending restrictions don't go far enough. He vowed to continue to fight for what he couldn't achieve in the negotiations. My last statement to everyone in America, I will never give up on you. It wasn't an easy fight. I had people on both sides upset. But I was focused on you, and I will stay focused on you. In total, 71 Republicans voted no on the deal, including Colorado Representative Ken Buck, who is now vowing to remove McCarthy as Speaker of the House. And shortly after the House approved the measure, President Biden sending out this tweet urging Senate lawmakers to act as quickly as possible. Now, he made the plea on Twitter, which he called a critical step in preventing the nation's default. He also thanked McCarthy for negotiating in good faith and highlighted the agreement's protections for Social Security, Medicaid and Medicare. Well, new signs of economic slowdown showing up in some key reports. From business activity to mortgage demand, rising interest rates are taking their toll. Now, at the same time, economists were caught off guard by a spike in job openings. National correspondent Atra El Nashar has a closer look at the data ahead of an, another big decision from the Federal Reserve. Some are beginning with the wheels of America's economy starting to slow down as interest rates cool down once red hot demand. The latest warning sign coming from Advance Auto Parts. The company's stock nosediving by more than 30% Wednesday, off an earnings report showing sales dragged down by supply chain issues and inflation. Costco and Home Depot also report a slowdown in sales. Demand for mortgages also losing steam, dropping to a three-month low, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association. Something that's revving up? Job openings reaching 10.1 million in April, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, defying expectations. That indicates that uh, the labor market remains quite strong, which is uh, something that should lend some confidence to workers and those who are looking for work. Even in retail, despite slower business, the number of open retail jobs shot up by more than 200,000 last month. This is perhaps a good sign that the retail sector is holding up pretty well, despite the challenges of a somewhat slow economy right now. On Wednesday, the Fed releasing observations of economic conditions across the country, noting a broad struggle to find workers. Districts in the Northeast reporting flat or declining business activity. Firms in the Midwest say inflation is shrinking profit margins, unable to pass higher prices on to customers. Farmers among those dimming their outlook. Everything is just keeps increasing it. You just can't keep up with it. The Fed also watching tightening credit conditions in the South and slowing real estate activity on the West Coast. There are a lot of moving parts for members of the Federal Reserve to factor into their next decision on interest rates when they meet again in mid-June, but a clearer picture should come into focus on Friday when we get an updated national unemployment rate. In Washington, I'm Atrel Nashar. Well, back here in Idaho, Meridian Mayor Robert Simonson is giving his State of the City address today. It will be at the Galaxy Event Center and also streamed online at 3.30 this afternoon. Now, if you plan to attend in person, you must register in advance. More information on that can be found on our website. And Idaho voters may have the chance to put an initiative on the 2024 ballot that opens up Idaho's primaries and allows for ranked choice voting. Veterans for Political Innovation is the group that's spearheading this initiative. They want to dissolve a law that was passed back in 2012 that requires Republican voters to affiliate with the party in order to vote for their candidates. By opening up the primaries, now everybody gets to look at and vote for all the candidates. 
Now, the second part of the measure is to implement a system called instant runoff or ranked choice voting. Now, the idea is to ensure a candidate has to earn more than half of first choice votes. The group says they hope to begin gathering signatures this summer to get it on the ballot. Keep in mind, Idaho requires 6% of registered voters in 18 of the 35 Idaho districts for a ballot initiative. And you may recall a recent school levy failed to pass this election. Now the West Ada School District says it's in a soft hiring freeze. The district says they now have to find alternative solutions for the district's facility needs. In addition to the freeze, outdoor activity improvements will be minimized, recurring maintenance projects will be delayed, some school boundaries will be adjusted, and portables will be placed at some schools. Well, hey, a new observatory at Bruneau Dunes State Park near Mountain Home is being dedicated today. It has Idaho's largest, most advanced telescope. They say the new state-of-the-art observatory features a rotating dome protecting this powerful telescope and providing an unobstructed view of the night sky. That dedication starts at 11 a.m. to officially add the facility to the park. After that, the first public show using the new scope is scheduled for June 16th so that the staff can be trained on how to use it. Well, the Idaho Steelheads, they're set to face off against the Florida Everblades in the Kelly Cup Finals. The Steelheads recently defeated the Toledo Walleye to earn their place in the finals. Game one and two being played here at the Idaho Central Arena this Saturday and Sunday. Tickets are on sale now. And Boise State football finalizing its schedule for the 2023-24 season. Take a look. The season begins with a road matchup against Washington. That's one of the four non-conference matchups along with games against UCF, North Dakota and Memphis. The season's first conference game, it'll be against San Diego State set for September 22nd. And the first home conference game is October 7th against San Jose State. You can learn more about the tickets and take a closer look at the schedule. Just head to our website. And the Idaho Potato Bowl officials, they've announced the date for this year's game. It's being played Saturday, December 23rd at Albertson Stadium. It'll be televised on ESPN. And the University of Idaho also making a big football announcement. The battle for the Little Brown Stein, it'll be aired nationally on ESPN2. Now, if you don't know, that's the game between U of I and the University of Montana. It's scheduled for October 14th. Well, sticking with sports, tonight at 7 o'clock, the Boise Hawks take on the Ogden Raptors in the third game of a six-game set here at Memorial Stadium. Now at first pitch, temperatures are going to be quite nice. We'll be at 76 degrees with mostly clear skies. We are going to see some significant winds around first pitch. We'll see winds at around 14 miles an hour. Now later on in the evening, we'll drop down to 66 degrees with some partly cloudy skies. Those wind speeds will also decrease as well down to 8 miles an hour. Now right now, we're waking up to some chilly temperatures. A bit humid out there this morning, 54 degrees the temperature right now with a southwesterly wind of about three miles an hour. Not affecting that feels like temperature at all, staying true to form at 54 degrees. Now we may see some mostly cloudy skies for a part of the morning, but we'll start to see those skies clear up as we head later on into the morning. Now we'll see partly cloudy and mostly sunny skies later on in the evening with some possible just sunshine around 5 p.m. Now we are going to see those wind speeds reach up to 15 miles an hour here in Boise and around 3 or 4 o'clock we could see those wind gusts reach up to 25 miles an hour. And then in terms of temperatures, we'll jump to the 60s around 10 a.m. or we'll reach the 70s around around 1 p.m. leading to a high today of 78 degrees expected to arrive at around 6 p.m. Now here's a look at future cast. We're going to see those mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies throughout the afternoon and evening with some thunderstorms over in the central mountains. If you're heading up to Stanley this weekend, be aware that they may see some thunderstorms on Friday, Saturday and Sunday this week. Now we'll see cloudy skies tomorrow morning, but then by the afternoon we'll start to see those skies clear with some more thunderstorms near Stanley as well. Now here's a look at the chance of precipitation here in Boise. We'll see dry conditions from Thursday all the way through Saturday, Sunday morning we have a chance of some widely scattered showers and we could see some isolated showers as we head into next week. Now temperatures are going to warm into the 80s tomorrow. We'll stay in the low 80s through the weekend, but then by Monday we'll jump into the mid 80s and we could approach 90 degrees later on next week. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, as you can see, gradually starting to see some more folks out on the road starting their Thursday morning, but everything moving along nice and smooth. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down if you're heading out the door anytime soon. So when you hop on the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. 
Well, now it's time for our question of the day. The question, nearly 60% of people wish they could do this year round. Hmm. I'm thinking it has to do with something outside. I'm going to say, what if you could just eat dinner outside every single day? That'd be pretty Ooh, nice. Like that just would be. outdoor yeah. eating. You know, what do you guys think? I like that. I was thinking um, swimming. Oh, that's that what was, I love to be yeah. able to do that year round without it being super cold. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Without yeah. the pool freezing over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Not being able to enter the pool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe mow their lawn. Oh, that's Ooh. another good one too. Oh my gosh, that reminds me of our news director. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ryan he loves lo mowing. Yeah. He has been loves mowing, mowing it twice. that lawn. Yes. <laughs> yeah, apparently that's the secret, guys. Yeah. Uh, if you want any <laughs> tips. All right, Robert says wearing shorts. Yep. Oh. Love wearing shorts. When I was in middle school, I wore shorts every single day, no matter what the temperature was. I was, was going so. to say if you're like my younger brother, no other will stop you. <laughs> you're always wearing shorts. <laughs> that's a good guess. All right, Doug says barbecuing. Oof, love it. Yeah. That's a great one. That is a good one, Doug. All right, Joe says sleeping. Uh, you know, yeah. sometimes hibernation sounds <laughs> nice. You can't rule it out, right? <laughs> All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, you can share your guesses on our Facebook page or Twitter. We'll read more of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. And coming up on CBS 2 News This Morning, hurricane season starts today the storm that may already be on its way. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 544. Welcome back. A Canadian Pacific train carrying hazardous materials has derailed in northwest Minnesota. The train heading to Canada derailed just south of the border in Lancaster. The train had a total of 25 cars, eight of which were tank cars. Some were reportedly filled with flammable liquids, but right now we don't know what type. No explosions or injuries have been reported. Authorities say the site is contained and there are no signs of leakage. However, they say they are taking precautions in case a leak does occur. Well, the Atlantic hurricane season officially kicking off today. Already, the federal government is monitoring a, tropi dis a tropical disturbance in the Gulf of New Mexico. Now, according to the National Hurricane Center, that system is currently meandering in the Gulf, and it has the potential to develop into a bigger storm. They expect it to move across Florida this weekend, bringing heavy rainfall and strong winds to the southern portion of the state. While residents there bracing for impact, federal officials are urging Americans across the country to be prepared for bad weather. It only takes one storm affecting your area to make it a busy season for you. So everybody across this country and across the Atlantic Basin, Eastern Pacific, coast of Mexico has to prepare as if they're going to be affected this year by a storm where you live in your community. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, predicting a near normal hurricane season for this year, which could include about 12 to 17 named storms. Well, meantime, President Joe Biden touting federal preparations ahead of hurricane season. He says severe weather from last year alone cost the U.S. more than $165 billion in damages. Despite this, he claims the country is better prepared for extreme weather this year. Over the past two years, a third of Americans have been personally affected by extreme weather conditions. With the impacts of climate change rapidly intensifying, more and more Americans will be affected. That's why we've also invested so much in making sure we deal with climate change and mitigate it. After meeting with his federal response team yesterday, the president highlighted how advancements in satellite technology are allowing the government to better track hurricanes and even wildfires. One well, invasive mosquito found down in California, the yellow fever mosquito detected in Butte County. It's the fourth year in a row that it has been found there. Now it has the potential to transmit viruses like dengue and Zika. Experts say the public plays a big role in helping control the spread of mosquitoes. Over there. So a lot of things are just inspecting sources that to be in your yard or, you know, in the, uh, the alleyways, what, you know, just different things that to be, especially in towns like Chico where there's a lot of trees. Um, rain gutters can be a culprit just because of all the trees, the leaves that fall and get uh, clogged gutters and you know over a wet winter like we had this year and sometimes people having um, um, air conditioners on certain rooftops you know that could tend to be a mosquito source. Now experts say the discovery of the mosquito was made earlier this year and they suspect the wet winter in the west may play a role in that. Ugh. 
hate mm. those names. I know, I'm already know. feeling itchy. Just saying that word makes me start to itch. Those yeah. things love me Ooh. too for some reason. I always end up getting like five or six bites on my leg for Ooh. no reason. Like everyone else is fine, but for some reason they love me. I'm really busy. Uh, well, right. and I feel like I've tried every hack that they say like makes mosquito bites stop itching. Oh yeah, like eating and bananas. Yeah. Oh, there's a full list. Yeah. I feel like none of them actually no. work. We just love to no. trick ourselves into thinking <laughs> it works. But switching gears over to weather, you know, we're going to see some partly cloudy skies today, but we are waking up to some overcast skies in some areas around the Treasure Valley and around the Gem State in total. We're seeing some high clouds around much of the region right now. We'll start to see those clouds break up over the course of the next couple hours here in Boise. We'll likely see partly cloudy skies for most of the day today. We may even see some sunshine later on this evening as the storm continues to move through the region. Yesterday we were dealing with that storm in bulk, but now we're starting to see that move up into Canada. Now we do got this storm right here that is going to impact us later on next week. It's going to drop down into California and then move back up as the jet stream pulls it up into the gem state later on next week. But we are going to see a drier weekend as high pressure that's currently impacting both Washington and Oregon slides over into the gem state. Now as for high temperatures, we'll see a high of 78 degrees in Boise and Nampa, 79 looking like the high in Caldwell and Emmett, 77 degrees going to be the high in Mountain Home and 81 degrees looking like the high over in Ontario. Then moving up to the mountains, 73 in Idaho City, 69 in Sun Valley, and 64 going to be the high in McCall. Moving to the seven-day forecast, we're going to see some partly cloudy skies today, but we'll see mostly sunny skies both tomorrow and on Saturday. High temperatures are going to jump into the 80s tomorrow and will likely stay in the low 80s through the weekend. But once we head into next week, we'll start to see those temperatures warm up even more. We'll jump into the mid-80s on Monday, and we could even approach 90 degrees on Tuesday and possibly on Wednesday. But after Wednesday, we'll start to see those temperatures drop as some more precipitation and some possible thunderstorms move in. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, they'll see partly cloudy skies both today and tomorrow. They'll likely see those partly cloudy skies stick around through the weekend. High temperature is going to jump into the low 70s on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and they could see those highs jump into the mid 70s on Tuesday and Wednesday as those thunderstorms return on Wednesday in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 550 this Thursday morning, as you can see, everything running nice and smooth. No delays on your screen and we're not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow down your Thursday morning commute if you're starting that anytime soon. So when you hop in the car for even more team traffic updates, be sure to turn your dial to 670 AM or 93.1 FM to KBOI. And coming up on CBS 2 News, a pilot from the Northwest seemingly disappears while working to rescue others in the Philippines. A look at the search to now rescue him. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 552, almost 553 on your Thursday. Welcome back. Amazon will pay out millions in settlements with the Federal Trade Commission over privacy concerns related to its Ring camera and Alexa products. The company settled the Ring-related suit for $5.8 million. Now, in a court filing, the FTC says employees were given unfettered access to personal videos and failed to protect customer safety. Regulators say one employee spied on female customers for months using cameras placed in bedrooms, even bathrooms. Amazon settled a second lawsuit that alleges it violated the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act by illegally storing minors' information through the Alexa voice assistant. The payout is for $25 million. And Amazon employees in Washington walked out yesterday protesting the recent return to office mandate. They say the move is a step back for the company and negatively impacts the environment. We're smogging up and polluting the city with all of the commuting, and we're causing huge commute problems for the people who actually have to commute. Many employees saying they have to make hour-long commutes to the Amazon building in downtown Seattle. Part of the reason many are focusing on the carbon impact to put pressure on Amazon. This comes as Amazon said it plans to reach net zero carbon by 2040. Well, a man from the Northwest working as an evac pilot in the Philippines now missing. After nearly seven years of rescuing others in remote areas to bring them to hospitals, Daniel Liu is now the one in need of help. Anna Montemore from our Sinclair sister station in Redding, California has more on the story. On March 1st, Daniel Louie, an American nurse, and two other passengers were transferring a patient in need of medical attention to a hospital in the Philippines. But en route, their GPS location was never seen again. Their disappearance has no conclusive evidence to confirm a crash, and it has left many wondering, where are they now? 
And, you know, he's just a fun-loving, kind person that everybody loved. Janet and Gordon Louie are the parents of Daniel, and they say that his passion for helping others was apparent by the time he got his pilot's license. He realized that he really wanted to help people through helicopter rescue. He saw the importance of, you know, doing that type of work and helping people, and he always had a generous heart, you know. Yeah. The community. So when his GPS locator disappeared and his helicopter went missing, the community he had always cared for would have to help him. Once Daniel's parents received the news that he was missing, they went to help in his search. Quickly threw some things together and we were off on the way as soon as we could the next day. Helping over seven mission pilots, Philippines Coast Guard and Navy, Malaysian military, United States Air Force, and more. Yet no evidence of a crash was found. They then worked with a commercial company hired to perform a target search on the ocean floor, which concluded with no findings. They could find a screwdriver in the bottom of the, um, in that area. A 20-hour day, 12-day search with no findings of a helicopter. Which is something that has provided a little more hope to the family. Well, through it all, uh, we felt the peace because we know in our hearts that uh, he was doing what he wanted to do. And, yeah. and in a way, it's encouraging that we didn't find anything. And so that way, so Absolutely. And we've just got to keep, yeah. keep uh, searching. They say they are now moving to incorporate a land-based search in hopes of finding their son. If you guys could say, you know, one thing to him right now, what would you tell him? We love him and we miss him. And we're trying to find you, Daniel. <laughs> yes. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, the 2024 presidential race underway, where one prominent Republican candidate will be today. Plus, a mom looking for a donor. The organ that could save her life. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. We have your latest headlines at the top of the hour. We'll be right back. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. Good morning and happy first day of June. I'm Vasily Varlamos. After a stormy last few days, the rain is moving out and the warmth is moving in. I'll let you know when we'll approach the 90s coming up. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter and coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, big news on the debt deal. The decision from the House just days away from the default deadline. And good morning, I'm Sarah Jacobson. This morning, Meridian's mayor has a big speech scheduled for today. When and where you can tune in to Mayor Robert Simison's State of the City address. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for waking up with us. We are kicking off June this morning. It is June 1st, 2023. Vasily will have your weather in just a bit, but first. New this morning, the House passing a debt ceiling and budget cut package late yesterday. The bill now heads to the Senate with passage expected by the end of the week. This as lawmakers face a looming deadline. Experts say the U.S. will run out of money to pay its debts as soon as this upcoming Monday. The compromise deal coming with dissension from progressive Democrats and hard right Republicans. The president set to deliver the commencement address at the Air Force Academy's graduation this morning. The occasion marks Biden's first time addressing the Academy's graduating class as president. He previously delivered the commencement address as vice president back in 2014 and in 2009. More than 900 cadets will become commissioned officers today, and the Air Force will cap the celebration with a performance from the Thunderbirds. And there are new developments in the investigation surrounding the former president's handling of classified documents. CBS News has confirmed that special counsel Jack Smith and his team have obtained an audio tape of Trump discussing a classified document that he held on to after leaving the White House. Now, the sources said that Trump acknowledges there are national security restrictions on that memo that detailed potential plans to attack Iran. Well, you're looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, where that debt ceiling deal now heads to the Senate. By a vote of 314 to 117, the House of Representatives agreed to raise the nation's debt ceiling. The deal also coming with spending cuts. 
something many Republicans are calling a win, cutting $1.5 trillion over the next decade. But some conservative Republicans say it doesn't go far enough. This deal begs the question, with Republicans like these, who needs Democrats? Democrats, too, torn over this compromise. Some progressives complaining those concessions could mean less funding to fight climate change and stricter work requirements for recipients of social services. We're supposed to take care of the most vulnerable people, and with this deal, we're harming the most vulnerable people. The Senate will now look to pass that bill quickly to avoid default. Both Democrat and Republican leaders in the Senate saying they'll support the bill. When this agreement reaches the Senate, I'll be proud to support it without delay. Any needless delay, any last minute brinksmanship at this point would be an unacceptable risk. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the U.S. will run short of money to pay its debts as of Monday, June 5th. And in his remarks after the House vote, Speaker Kevin McCarthy touting the GOP's priorities that were achieved in the debt ceiling deal. In particular, he highlighted the new work requirements for federal aid programs as well as budget cuts to the IRS. He also acknowledged the discontent from fellow Republicans who say the spending restrictions don't go far enough. My last statement to everyone in America, I will never give up on you. It wasn't an easy fight. I had people on both sides upset, but I was focused on you and I will stay focused on you. In total, 71 Republicans voted no on the deal, including Colorado Representative Ken Buck, who's now vowing to remove McCarthy as Speaker of the House. And shortly after the House approved the measure, President Biden sending out this tweet, urging lawmakers to act as quickly as possible. He made the plea on Twitter, which he called a critical step in preventing the nation from defaulting. He also thanked McCarthy for negotiating and highlighted the agreement's protections for Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Well, the Federal Reserve may skip hiking interest rates at its next meeting, except for this month. Federal Reserve Governor Philip Jefferson said in a speech yesterday that skipping a rate hike, it would allow Fed policymakers to see more data before making decisions. The Fed has now implemented 10 straight rate hikes over the past 14 months. The current benchmark interest rate, roughly 5.1 percent. Well, more states sending some of their National Guard members to help Border Patrol at the U.S.-Mexico border. Now, the governors of Virginia, West Virginia and South Carolina announcing the deployment of their National Guard troops. This brings the total number of Republican-led states deploying soldiers or offering assistance to at least eight states. These latest announcements come after Texas Governor Greg Abbott asked other states for help. And you may recall that Idaho State Police, they're currently at the southern border of Texas, training with the Texas Department of Public Safety. Well, back here in Idaho, Meridian Mayor Robert Simison is giving his State of the City address today. It will be at the Galaxy Event Center and also streamed online at 3.30 this afternoon. Now, if you plan to attend in person, keep in mind you must register in advance. More information on that can be found on our website. And Idaho voters may have the chance to put an initiative on the 2024 ballot that opens up Idaho's primaries and allows for ranked choice voting. Veterans for Political Innovation is the group that's spearheading this initiative. They want to dissolve a law passed back in 2012 that requires Republican voters to affiliate with the party in order to vote for their candidates. By opening up the primaries, now everybody gets to look at and vote for all the candidates. The second part of the measure is to implement a system called instant runoff or ranked choice voting. Now, the idea is to ensure that a candidate has to earn more than half of first choice votes. The group says they hope to begin gathering signatures this summer to get it on the ballot. Idaho does require 6% of registered voters in 18 of the 35 Idaho districts for a ballot initiative. And you may recall a recent school levy failed to pass this election. Now the West Ada School District says it's in a soft hiring freeze. Now the district says they now have to find alternative solutions for the district's facility needs. In addition to the freeze, outdoor activity improvements will be minimized. Recurring maintenance projects will be delayed. Some school boundaries will be adjusted and portables will be placed at some schools. 
And a new observatory at the Bruneau Dune State Park near Mountain Home is being dedicated today. It has Idaho's largest, most advanced telescope. They say the new state-of-the-art observatory features a rotating dome protecting that powerful telescope and providing an unobstructed view of the night sky. That dedication starting at 11 a.m. to officially add the facility to the park. After that, the first public show using the new scope is scheduled for June 16th. Mark your calendars. That's so staff can be trained on how to use it. And another fun summer event this Saturday. Cool off with your furry friends. The pup is opening a pool for dogs in CUNA. The grand opening will have a rescue fundraiser, an auction, vendors, food, music, and of course, plenty of dogs ready to take a dip. The grand opening runs from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And Make-A-Wish Idaho holding its ninth annual Walk for Wishes tomorrow. It's at Esther Simplot Park. The walk about a mile long. It begins at 6. Registration starting an hour before the walk. The organization hoping to raise about $80,000. This year, they say they want to grant more wishes forever than ever for Idaho children. You can find a link to register on our website. That's IdahoNews.com. Well, if you're looking for some other weekend events this weekend, the Boise Hawks will finish out their six game set with three games on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And now for their third game of the set, we are going to see temperatures at 76 degrees with some mostly clear skies at first pitch tonight. But you may want to bring a coat because we are going to see some significant winds. We'll see wind speeds at around 14 miles an hour at first pitch. Those wind speeds will drop down to eight miles an hour as we head throughout the game. And by the ninth inning, we'll be at 66 degrees with some partly cloudy skies. Now, right now we're waking up to a bit of humidity this morning. Temperature is sitting at 53 degrees, so you may need a coat as well, but we do got some calm winds out there, so that feels like temperature staying true to form at 53 degrees. Now, as you can see behind me, we're waking up to some cloudy skies, but those cloudy skies should move over to the mountains over the next hour or two, and then we're going to see some partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies all day today with some sunshine, especially between 4 and 5 p.m. Now, we are going to see some strong winds this afternoon and evening with a top wind speed of 15 miles an hour, and we could see those winds gusts reach up to 25 miles an hour today, and then in terms of temperatures, we're going to jump up into the 60s around 10 a.m. or reach the 70s around 1 p.m. leading to our high today of 79 degrees. So moving over to Futurecast, we are going to see some showers near Stanley later on this afternoon. If you're traveling up to Stanley this weekend, we are going to see some thunderstorms on multiple different days this weekend near Stanley. We're also going to see some strong storms move up into the Long Valley later on on Friday morning. And then in terms of precipitation here in the Treasure Valley, we'll see dry conditions from Thursday through Saturday. But then on Sunday, we have a chance of some showers. We could also see some showers on Tuesday. Now temperatures will jump up into the 80s over the weekend. Then we'll jump into the mid 80s on Monday. We'll keep on rising in temperatures, jumping close to 90 degrees on Tuesday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 610 this Thursday morning, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk KBOI traffic studio for a look at our Thursday morning commute. Good morning, Ron. Well, good morning. Uh, doing just great. It's a nice quiet start all the way around. You can see light traffic in some of the camera shots. Uh, the big uh, paving project that kicked off overnight last night for the next couple of weeks around Eagle Chinden. Spot to steer clear of between 10 o'clock at night and 6 in the morning. Now they got that wrapped up a little before 6 this morning, about a quarter tail or so, and uh, everything was reopened. But definitely keep that area in mind for the next couple of weeks. They say you could encounter two-hour delays on Chinden east-westbound there at Eagle Road overnights. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. Some important things to keep in mind as you head out the door this Thursday morning. So when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, the 2024 presidential race underway, where one prominent Republican candidate will be today. And a Lego thief caught down in California. How much one man is accused of stealing that has the retailer thousands of dollars in the hole. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. In a new survey, 75% of people say they prefer to do this at home. The answer, drinking a little wine. All right, now for today's question. Nearly 60% of people wish they could do this year round. All right, folks, what do you think it is? This is CBS 2 News This Morning. 
It's 614. Welcome back. Republican presidential candidate Ron DeSantis is set to make a campaign stop in New Hampshire today. The Florida governor spent his first full day of campaigning in Iowa yesterday. Nick Weig from our Sinclair sister station in Cedar Rapids gives us a look. Governor Ron DeSantis before a packed crowd here at Hawkeye Downs received plenty of applause throughout his speech outlining strict conservative policies and how unlike other Republicans, he will get them done. Are you happy to see institution after institution be infected with the woke mind virus? It was a speech loaded with the right wing platforms that have become popular within the Republican Party. DeSantis touting his actions as governor, including his controversial moves on immigration. It is not normal to have millions of illegal aliens pouring into communities all across our country, to have drugs pouring in across our country because of the dereliction of duty of the commander in chief. The governor briefly joined on stage by his wife, Casey, who shares stories of home life with three young children and defending her husband's actions and celebrating his resolve. Even though he faced unrelenting attacks, he never backed down, he never cowered, he never changed, he never took the path of least resistance. You know in watching in execution that he fights and stands and defends what is right. Finally, DeSantis closed with a promise to the estimated 500 in attendance that the Iowa caucus can propel him to the nomination and the White House. You can set your clock to January 20th, 2025, at high noon, because on the west side of the Capitol, I'll have this left hand on the Bible, I will have this right hand in the air, and I will be taking the oath of office as the 47th president of these United States. No excuses. I will get the job done. I'm Nick Weig reporting. And former Vice President Mike Pence is jumping in the fray for president as well. The Associated Press reports that Pence is set to launch his campaign on June 7th, also in Iowa. Adding his name to a growing list of candidates, that includes his old boss, former President Donald Trump. Pence sees Iowa as critical to his chances. He intends to campaign aggressively for the state's voters. And 2024 Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley says her husband is heading to Africa. My husband is a combat veteran. He deployed to Afghanistan. We just found out he's getting deployed again. Michael Haley serves as a major with the South Carolina Army National Guard. He is expected to deploy to support the U.S. Africa Command. Haley is likely to be deployed through most of his wife's presidential campaign. Well, there are new developments in the investigation surrounding the former president's handling of classified documents. CBS News has confirmed that special counsel Jack Smith and his team have obtained an audio tape of Trump discussing a classified document that he held on to after leaving the White House. Sources say that Trump acknowledges that there are national security restrictions on that memo that detailed potential plans to attack Iran. Former federal prosecutor Scott Fredrickson saying this could be a big influence on whether the special counsel indicts the former president. It's a the kind of evidence every prosecutor seeks, uh, there's no better evidence than the words of the individual defendant himself. Trump's lawyers say they can't, they can prove there was no wrongdoing. The special counsel has declined to comment. And another investigation update. Now two top Republicans, they've been granted access to view a document that the the FBI that they believe contains evidence of wrongdoing by then Vice President Biden. Now these claims being made after Chairman James Comer threatened to hold the director of the FBI in contempt of Congress for not handing over the documents to the House Oversight Committee. This accusation fits a pattern that we un uncovered, uh, especially in Romania, where then Vice President Biden visits a country, talks about foreign policy and foreign aid, and then two weeks later his family starts getting uh, bank wires uh, from uh, foreign nationals in this country. While well, Senator Chuck Grassley and Congressman Comer will be able to view the document, the FBI is still unlikely to hand it over to the committee. If that remains the case, Comer says he'll begin contempt of Congress proceedings. Well, hey, if you've got kids who love Lego, you know just how expensive the toys can be, and apparently so do thieves. One man in California under arrest after police say he stole $30,000 worth of the stuff.
Loss prevention employees there had noticed a male uh, loading a large amount of Legos into a shopping cart, and they also recognized him from previous thefts. The suspect is charged with felony theft and resisting. Okay, but I want to see what thirty thousand dollars worth of Legos looks like. I was just about to say like. that. I was yeah. like thirty thousand. I wonder how many like different packages it would yeah. take. Yeah, it's a lot of Legos. So. A lot of Legos. There's a lot to think about here. I actually have a uh, <laughs> I have a great pun for you guys. Legos okay. switch it over to weather. Sorry about that. See, I just, that was a good one. Oh no, it wasn't. No, no, no. <laughs> but All right. switching gears over to weather, we are seeing some partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies all around the Gem State right now. Over the Boise Mountains right now, we are seeing some partly cloudy skies, but there are some mostly cloudy skies over Boise right now. We are going to see those clouds move over into the mountains over the next hour or so. We should see partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies today as this storm that was impacting us over the last couple of days moves north over into Canada. Now we do got a storm waiting in the wings over off the coast right now that is going to move in the gem state later on next week. Now as for the next couple of days, we're going to see high pressure that's currently impacting areas like Washington and Oregon right now slide over into the gem state and we are going to see some drier conditions this weekend. Now 79 degrees is going to be the high in Boise, Nampa and Caldwell. 80 degrees looking like the high over in Emmett. 78 going to be the high over in Mountain Home. They're going to break the 80s over in Ontario as well. They'll see a high of 82 degrees today and then moving up to the mountains. 74 in Idaho City, 69 in Sun Valley, and 66 going to be the high over in McCall. Moving to the seven day forecast, we'll see some mostly sunny skies both tomorrow and on Saturday. We'll see those high temperatures jump up into the low 80s over the weekend. Then we'll keep on jumping up in terms of temperatures as we hit in the next week. We'll see high temperatures in the mid 80s on Monday, and then we'll approach 90 degrees on both Tuesday and Wednesday, but we may start to see those temperatures drop after Wednesday. As some thunderstorms moving into the region. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, they'll see high temperatures in the upper 60s both today and tomorrow. And they'll see partly cloudy skies through the weekend as high temperatures jump into the low 70s. And they may even rise into the mid 70s as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday. However, some more thunderstorms are expected on Wednesday in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOY bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's get a traffic update from Ron O'Brien in the News Talk KBOY traffic studios. Still doing very well this morning. If you're getting ready to get out the door to do the uh, earlier part of the drive here, 6 o'clock hour, usually any buildups we have are pretty minimal between 6 and 7, uh, even at the emerge uh, points uh, there in Meridian. Nothing going. It's uh, good on the connector and away from the freeways, too. Things uh, quiet all the way around on a Thursday. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you hop in the car and start your day to stay updated on your Thursday morning commute, you can tune in to KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, a mom is looking for a donor after her body is pushed to the limit. The organ that could just save her life. Plus, these furry friends making a big impact on our health, how they're lending a paw in hospitals. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 625. Welcome back. A mom with two young boys feeling the aftermath of COVID-19. Medical reporter Liz Bonus sharing what's needed now to save her life. Hey there, everybody. When Markeisha Davis was diagnosed with COVID-19, the pandemic, it pushed her kidneys, already stressed from type 1 diabetes, to a dangerous place. Um, they started functioning at 17 percent, and I was told that I had a year left um, before I needed to start dialysis. She didn't make it a year. Daily now, a home machine like this one filters Markeisha's blood to keep her alive. I have to go to bed at a certain time. I have to time it. Um, because I have to run for eight hours. A kidney transplant from a living donor is Markeisha's best option to get back to a healthy life. We know that the wait times are long for waiting for a deceased donor kidney, three to five years, and I'm working with one person that they've been told seven to ten. Anyone can volunteer to be tested, so Darcy Gibson's team from Off the List helped Markeisha Davis create a contact page. It really is empowering people like Markeisha to give her the confidence and the tools to be able to share her story. So if you're watching this, Markeisha's boys need a match for their mom. Well, I'm here because of them. Um, I just, I, I mean, I'm the center of their world. Now, initial screening to become a living donor, just a cheek swab. She'd love to have you search hashtag Markeisha Davis. If you'd like to reach out on social media for more information, we'd love to have you do that. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you.
Well, dogs are being used to help people feel better all across the world, and experts say it's working. Having full-time support, dogs at children's hospitals can offer benefits for both the patients and the staff. A new report looked at the use of these special dogs at a large public children's hospital in Japan. It found that dogs were the most helpful for young people with terminal illnesses. Coming up on CBS 2 News, Americans feeling the impact of the economy ahead of another federal rate hike meeting. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This is CBS 2 News this morning. Looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, where the debt ceiling deal now heads to the Senate. By a vote of 314 to 117, the House of Representatives agreed to raise the nation's debt ceiling. That deal also coming with spending cuts, something Republicans are calling a win, cutting the deficit $1.5 trillion over the next decade. But some conservative Republicans say it doesn't nearly go far enough. This deal begs the question, with Republicans like these, who needs Democrats? Democrats, too, are torn over the compromise. Some progressives complaining those concessions could mean less funding to fight climate change and stricter work requirements for recipients of social services. We're supposed to take care of the most vulnerable people, and with this deal, we're harming the most vulnerable people. The Senate will look to pass the bill quickly to avoid default. Both Democratic and Republican leaders in the Senate already saying they'll support the bill. When this agreement reaches the Senate, I'll be proud to support it without delay. Any needless delay, any last minute brinksmanship at this point would be an unacceptable risk. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen saying the U.S. will run short of money to pay off its debts as of Monday, June 5th. And in his remarks after the House vote, Speaker Kevin McCarthy touted the GOP priorities achieved in the debt ceiling deal. Now, in particular, he touted the new work requirements for federal aid programs, as well as budget cuts to the IRS. He also acknowledged the discontent from fellow Republicans who say the spending restrictions don't go far enough and vowed to continue to fight for what he couldn't achieve in those negotiations. My last statement to everyone in America, I will never give up on you. It wasn't an easy fight. I had people on both sides upset. But I was focused on you, and I will stay focused on you. In total, 71 Republicans voted no on the deal, including Colorado Representative Ken Buck, who's now vowing to remove McCarthy as Speaker of the House. And shortly after the House approved that measure, President Biden sending out this tweet urging Senate lawmakers to act quickly. He made the plea on Twitter, which he called a critical step in preventing the nation's default. He also thanked McCarthy for negotiating and highlighted the agreement protections for Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid. Well, new signs of economic slowdown showing up in some key reports. From business activity to mortgage demand, rising interest rates, they're taking a toll. But at the same time, economists were caught off guard by a spike in job openings. National correspondent Atra El Nashar has a closer look at the data ahead of another big decision from the Federal Reserve. Some are beginning with the wheels of America's economy starting to slow down as interest rates cool down once red hot demand. The latest warning sign coming from Advance Auto Parts. The company's stock nosediving by more than 30% Wednesday, off an earnings report showing sales dragged down by supply chain issues and inflation. Costco and Home Depot also report a slowdown in sales. Demand for mortgages also losing steam, dropping to a three-month low, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association. Something that's revving up? Job openings, reaching 10.1 million in April, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, defying expectations. That indicates that uh, the labor market remains quite strong, which is uh, something that should lend some confidence to workers and those who are looking for work. Even in retail, despite slower business, the number of open retail jobs shot up by more than 200,000 last month. This is perhaps a good sign that the retail sector is holding up pretty well, despite the challenges of a somewhat slow economy right now. 
On Wednesday, the Fed releasing observations of economic conditions across the country, noting a broad struggle to find workers. Districts in the Northeast reporting flat or declining business activity. Firms in the Midwest say inflation is shrinking profit margins, unable to pass higher prices on to customers. Farmers among those dimming their outlook. Everything is just keeps increasing. It, you just can't keep up with it. The Fed also watching tightening credit conditions in the South and slowing real estate activity on the West Coast. There are a lot of moving parts for members of the Federal Reserve to factor into their next decision on interest rates when they meet again in mid-June. But a clearer picture should come into focus on Friday when we get an updated national unemployment rate. In Washington, I'm Atrell Nishar. And back here in Idaho, Meridian Mayor Robert Simpson giving his State of the City address today. It will be at the Galaxy Event Center and also streamed online at 3.30 this afternoon. Now, keep in mind if you plan to attend in person, you must register in advance. More information on that can be found on our website. And Idaho voters may have the chance to put an initiative on the 2024 ballot that opens up Idaho's primaries and allows for ranked choice voting. Veterans for Political Innovation is the group that's spearheading this initiative. They want to dissolve a law that was passed back in 2012 that requires Republican voters to affiliate with the party in order to vote for their candidates. By opening up the primaries, now everybody gets to look at and vote for all the candidates. And the second part of the measure is to implement a system called instant runoff or ranked choice voting. The idea is to ensure that a candidate has to earn more than half of first choice votes. The group says they hope to begin gathering signatures this summer to get it on the ballot. Idaho requires 6% of registered voters in 18 of the 35 Idaho districts for a ballot initiative. And you may recall a recent school levy failed to pass this past election. Now the West Ada School District says it's in a soft hiring freeze. The district says they now have to find alternative solutions for the district's facility needs. In addition to that freeze, outdoor activity improvements will be minimized. Recurring maintenance projects will be delayed. Some school boundaries will be adjusted and portables will be placed at some schools. And a new observatory at the Bernau Dunes State Park near Mountain Home is being dedicated today. It has Idaho's largest, most advanced telescope. They say the new state-of-the-art observatory features a rotating dome protecting the powerful telescope and providing an unobstructed view of the night sky. That dedication starts at 11 a.m. to officially add the facility to the park. After that, mark your calendars, the first public show using the new scope scheduled for June 16th. That's so the staff can be trained on how to use it. Hey, the Idaho Steelheads are set to face off against the Florida Everblades in the Kelly Cup Finals. The Steelheads recently defeating the Toledo Walleye, earning their place in the finals. Game one and two will be played right here at the Idaho Central Arena this Saturday and Sunday. Tickets, they're now on sale. And Boise State football finalizing its schedule for the 2023-24 season. Take a look. The season begins with a road matchup against Washington. That's one of the four non-conference matchups, along with games against UCF, North Dakota, and Memphis. The season's first conference game will be at San Diego State on September 22nd. And the first home conference game is October 7th against San Jose State. You can learn more about tickets and take a closer look at the schedule. Just head to our website. And the Idaho Potato Bowl officials, they've announced the date for this year's game. It's set for Saturday, December 23rd at Albertson Stadium. It'll be televised on ESPN. And the University of Idaho also making a big football announcement. Now the battle for the Little Brown Stein, it'll be aired nationally on ESPN2. Now that's the game between U of I and University of Montana. It's scheduled for October 14th. Well, sticking with sports, the Boise Hawks playing their third out of six games against the Ogden Raptors this weekend. Now, as for today, at first pitch, we're going to be sitting right around the mid-70s. We'll be at 76 degrees with some mostly clear skies, but you may want to bring a coat because we are going to see some significant winds. Wind speeds could be at 14 miles an hour at first pitch, but then later on in the game, around the ninth inning, we'll be at 66 degrees with some partly cloudy skies. Wind speeds will also decrease to 8 miles an hour. Now, as for this morning, we're waking up to 53 degrees here in Boise with some mostly cloudy 
cloudy skies. Now we are going to see those clouds move over in the mountains in the next hour or two, and we should see partly cloudy and mostly sunny skies all day today. Now taking a look at that, we are going to see those mostly sunny skies come out at around 9 or 10 o'clock, and those will stick around for most, if not all, of the rest of the day. Now in terms of those wind speeds, we'll see a top wind speed of 15 miles an hour, but we could see those wind gusts reach up to 25 miles an hour. And then in terms of temperatures, we're going to be in the 60s around 10 a.m., jumping to the 70s around noon, leading to our high today of 79 degrees, expected to arrive at around 6 p.m. Now we're going to see those clouds move over into the mountains, and they're also going to see some storms near Stanley later on this afternoon and evening. If you're heading up to Stanley this weekend, you are going to see some thunderstorms. Otherwise, we're just going to see partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies around the Gem State as we wake up in the morning. We'll see some storms move over to McCall and parts of the Long Valley later on on Friday morning, and then after that, we're going to see partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies here in Boise. Now moving over to the chance of precipitation, we'll see little to no precipitation through the next couple of days. We do have a slight chance of seeing some showers on Sunday morning, but after that, we'll see that precipitation move out. We'll see those high temperatures jump up into the 80s over the weekend, and when we reach the mid 80s on Monday, I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's check in with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk KBOI traffic studio. And taking a live look out there, as you can see, we're starting to see some more folks out on the road, but everything running nice and smooth. Keep an eye out for that sun glare that you may start to see as that sun continues to come up this Thursday morning. And we're not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down if you're heading out the door anytime soon. So when you hop in the car, be sure you turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. Now it's time for our question of the day. The question, nearly 60% of people wish they could do this year round. Uh, I'm going to say possibly, I'm going to stick with my guests from the first hour and I'm going to say just hanging out outside. I don't know, maybe eating outside or just, you know, just hanging out on the deck. I don't know yeah. what you guys think. Yeah, I no, like that one. nice weather all year round, mm -hmm. 100%. Um, I'm going to go with swimming. Kind of yeah. great guess. Same thing. Want to be outside when it's nice all yeah. year round. Keeping with the outdoor theme, mowing your yard. Oh yeah, yeah. great guess. All right, well, let's see what folks at home have to say. Jeff says going skiing. All right, oh, the opposite okay. of mine. I, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say kind of the opposite time of year. I know. That I we were say. thinking of. I know we're heading into summer, so a lot of people itching to still be up on the mountain. Let's mm -hmm. see what else folks have to say this morning. Oh, all right. Well, folks, if you think you know the answer, you still have 15 minutes to get those in. Audra says wearing sandals. I actually do that year round. <laughs> All right. And Cindy says travel slash vacation. Oh, okay. Oh, I like that one too. All right. Yeah. Again, if you think you know the answer, you can share your guesses on our Facebook or Twitter and we'll reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS this morning. And coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, hurricane season starting today, the storm that may already be on its way. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Welcome back. A Canadian Pacific train carrying hazardous materials has derailed in northwest Minnesota. The train headed to Canada derailed just south of the border in Lancaster. The train had a total of 25 cars, eight of which were tank cars. Some were reportedly filled with flammable liquids, but right now we don't know what type. No explosions or injuries have been reported so far. Authorities say the site is contained and there are no signs of leakage. However, they say they are taking precautions in case a leak does occur. Well, the Atlantic hurricane season officially kicking off today and already the federal government is monitoring a tropical disturbance in the Gulf of Mexico. According to the National Hurricane Center, this system currently meandering in the Gulf, it does have the potential to develop into a bigger storm. They do expect it to move across Florida this weekend, bringing heavy rainfall and strong winds to the southern part of the state. While residents there are bracing for impact, federal officials are urging Americans across the country to better prepare for bad weather. It only takes one storm affecting your area to make it a busy season for you. So everybody across this country and across the Atlantic Basin, Eastern Pacific, coast of Mexico has to prepare as if they're going to be affected this year by a storm where you live in your community. NOAA is predicting a near normal hurricane season this year, which could include about 12 to 17 named storms. 
Well, meantime, President Joe Biden touting federal preparations ahead of hurricane season. He says severe weather from last year alone cost the United States more than $165 billion in damages. Despite this, he claims the country is better prepared for extreme weather this year. Over the past two years, a third of Americans have been personally affected by extreme weather conditions. With the impacts of climate change rapidly intensifying, more and more Americans will be affected. That's why we've also invested so much in making sure we deal with climate change and mitigate it. After meeting with his federal response team yesterday, the president highlighted how advancements in satellite technology are allowing the government to better track hurricanes and even wildfires. Well, an invasive mosquito found down in California, the yellow fever mosquito detected in Butte County. It's the fourth year in a row it has been found there. It has the potential to transmit viruses like dengue and Zika. Experts say the public plays a big role in helping control the spread of mosquitoes. Over there. So a lot of things are just inspecting sources that could be in your yard or, you know, in the, uh, the alleyways, what, you know, just different things that could be, especially in towns like Chico where there's a lot of trees. Um, rain gutters can be a culprit just because of all the trees, the leaves that fall and get uh, clogged gutters. And, you know, over a wet winter like we had this year and sometimes people having um, um, air conditioners on certain rooftops, you know, that could tend to be a mosquito source. Experts say the discovery of the mosquito was made earlier this year compared to last year, and they suspect the wet winter in the West may be playing a role in that. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the perfect reaction. Yeah, we're all on the same page there. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, love the summertime, mm -hmm. just not those little buggers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's yeah. getting to that time of year. We're going to mm -hmm. see some mostly sunny skies later on today. This morning, we're waking up to some cloudy skies around Boise. And take a look at that sunrise over in Sun Valley right now. Gorgeous pictures coming from Bald Mountain this morning. And we're seeing some partly cloudy skies over in Sun Valley, some partly cloudy skies over at Bogus Basin right now. And we will start to see some partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies as this storm continues to move out of the gem state. Now this is what's been causing us those storms over the past couple of days. And we do got some more storms on the way. This storm here just hanging off the coast of Washington and Oregon right now. We'll move in the gem state later on next week. But as for this weekend, we're going to see high pressure that's currently hanging out over Washington and Oregon slide over into the gem state and that's going to bring us some partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies over the weekend. High temperatures will also start to warm up. We're warming above average today after being below average yesterday. We'll see high 79 degrees in Boise, Nampa and Caldwell. 80 going to be the high over in Emmett and moving up to the mountain 66 over in McCall. Now here's a look at the extended forecast. We'll see those mostly sunny skies on Friday and Saturday. Temperatures will be in the low 80s over the weekend. Then we'll jump up into the mid 80s on Monday. We could see those high temperatures approach 90 degrees on Tuesday and Wednesday. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, they'll see partly cloudy skies all weekend. Temperatures will jump into the low 80s on Saturday and Sunday and they'll see those temperatures in the mid 70s on both Tuesday and on Wednesday with some scattered thunderstorms on Wednesday in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 649 this morning, let's get a Thursday morning traffic update from Ron O'Brien in the News Talk KBOI traffic studio. It's been getting just a little bit busier, nothing uh, crazy, no long delays, but you can see a little heavier traffic in the uh, camera shots there in the upper left hand corner of the uh, merge area at 10 mile, busying up just a bit. Same thing at Meridian Road. And even in Nampa, we've had a little crowding at times. It uh, fluctuates, not real consistent, but sun glare is starting to become a little bit of a factor, too, for the drive. If you're getting ready to get out the door, keep that in mind. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you hop in the car and start your Friday Eve, as we like to call it here on CBS 2 News this morning, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. And coming up on CBS 2 News, a pilot from the Northwest seemingly disappears while working to rescue others in the Philippines. A look at the search to now rescue him. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 6.53 on your Thursday. Welcome back. Amazon will pay out millions in settlements with the Federal Trade Commission over privacy concerns related to its Ring Camera and Alexa products. 
The company settled the ring-related suit for $5.8 million in a court filing. The FTC saying employees were given unfettered access to personal videos and failed to protect customer safety. Regulators saying one employee spied on female customers for months using cameras placed in not only bedrooms, but also bathrooms. Amazon settled a second lawsuit that alleges it violated the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act by illegally storing minors' information through the Alexa voice assistant. Now that payout is for $25 million. Well, a man from the Northwest working as an evac pilot in the Philippines is now missing. After nearly seven years of rescuing others in remote areas to bring them to hospitals, Daniel Louie is now the one in need of help. Anna Montemore from our Sinclair sister station in Redding, California has more on that story. On March 1st, Daniel Louie, an American nurse and two other passengers were transferring a patient in need of medical attention to a hospital in the Philippines. But en route, their GPS location was never seen again. Their disappearance has no conclusive evidence to confirm a crash and it has left many wondering where are they now? And you know, he's just a fun loving kind person that everybody loved. Janet and Gordon Louie are the parents of Daniel, and they say that his passion for helping others was apparent by the time he got his pilot's license. He realized that he really wanted to help people through helicopter rescue. He saw the importance of you know, doing that type of work and helping people, and he always had a generous heart, you know. Yeah. The community. So when his GPS locator disappeared and his helicopter went missing, the community he had always cared for would have to help him. Once Daniel's parents received the news that he was missing, they went to help in his search. Quickly threw some things together and we were off on the way as soon as we could the next day. Helping over seven mission pilots, Philippines Coast Guard and Navy, Malaysian military, United States Air Force and more. Yet no evidence of a crash was found. They then worked with a commercial company hired to perform a target search on the ocean floor, which concluded with no findings. They could find a screwdriver in the bottom of the, um, that area. A 20 hour day, it's 12 days search with no findings of a helicopter. Which is something that has provided a little more hope to the family. Well, through it all, uh, we felt the peace because we know in our hearts that uh, he was doing what he wanted to do. And, yeah. and in a way, it's encouraging that we didn't find anything. And so that way, so Absolutely. And we've just got to keep, yeah. keep uh, searching. They say they are now moving to incorporate a land-based search in hopes of finding their son. If you guys could say, you know, one thing to him right now, what would you tell him? We love him and we miss him. And we're trying to find you, Daniel. <laughs> yes. All right. It's time for our question of the day. And that question is nearly 60% of people wish they could do this year round. What is it? Vasily, you got it. Eat outdoors. Oh, nice. Cool. I'm, a yeah. little bit of a, I'm on a little bit of a hot streak right yeah. now. Yeah. A couple answers right Yeah, I need to pick up. I know. Work on it, pace. Ashley. All right. You guys are still ahead. All right. We'll see you back here at 11 o'clock. Your no local news and weather can be found on IdahoNews.com. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.